Hello everyone and welcome to the news of Ashfiroq TV. Today's stories include case against activists and media elements who insulted armed forces. African Union holds mini summit on Ethiopian Dam next Tuesday. Human Rights Council commends Sudan cooperation with the Commission Country Office. The Sudanese Armed Forces announced that it appointed in May 2020 a commissioner for the Commander-in-Chief and for the Armed Forces who is specializing in informatic crimes to raise legal procedures and to follow up complaints within a team of legal officers of the military judiciary and under the supervision of the military public prosecutor. In a press release, the Armed Forces explained that the task of this committee is to monitor all insults against the Armed Forces with all its components and to take the necessary legal measures in this regard. The release explained that the committee has monitored a number of violations and insults against the armed forces and has started leveling suits to the components prosecution in accordance with the principle of the rule of law, the criminal law, the crimes against the state, the law of the press and publications and informatic crimes, which was amended recently to include deterrent penalties. Several African leaders next Tuesday will discuss the filling of Ethiopia's giant hydropower dam on the Blue Nile after the failure of talks between the three riparian countries at the ministerial levels. Talks to mediator Cyril Ramaphosa, the South African president, and African Union president who is preparing a new mini-summit. The video conference meeting on the Great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam will be held at the initiative of the South African president Cyril Ramaphosa in his capacity as the chairperson of the African Union. <coughs> the judiciary has categorically denied the report and establishment of an office headed by a Supreme Court judge to review complaints related to judicial rulings during the era of the ousted regime. A clarification from the judiciary affirmed to Sunnah that the Chief Justice Ni'mat Abdullah Muhammad Khair did not issue a decision on this matter, as reported by some media, stressing that it is absolutely not true that the Chief Justice established an office that deals with the judicial rulings in a way that violates the law. Leader of the opposition Bija Congress, Osama Saeed, pointed out that the upcoming peace agreement will open the way to a comprehensive national reconciliation that does not exclude anyone. He said the appointment of civilian state governors must be subject to extensive consultations with all partners of the revolution, top of which is the Revolutionary Front. He called on the leadership in the state to stand at an equal distance from all the native components in East Sudan. Member of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Aisha Musa, has affirmed the state keenness to enhance and rehabilitate the punitive and reform institutions in the country. In a speech she gave on Saturday on the occasion of the International Prisoners' Day, Aisha stressed that prisons are not places for torture, but institutions for discipline, training and considering a better path of life. She pointed out that the state is exerting serious efforts to develop the punitive and reformation institutions and to keep pace with the progress achieved worldwide in this field in addition to building the inmate's personality in order to help him to adapt to the society after his release and to eliminate the negative consequences that fall on his family as victims of his mistake. She stressed that all these humanitarian efforts are for the benefit of the society, especially that the inmate is in sometimes a patron and backbone of the family and the main source for fulfilling its material and moral needs. The Geneva-based Human Rights Council heard during dialogue with the government of Sudan and the High Commissioner for Human Rights to fresh reports that progress achieved on the opening of the Commission Country Office in Khartoum in response to the implementation of the Human Rights Council decision number 35 and 42. The Deputy High Commissioner Nadal Nashif, in her statement, commended the facilities provided by the government of Sudan concerning the full mandated country office, which has started its work following the signing of the country agreement in New York. The High Commission official said the office will contribute to the priorities of the government, including the sustainable development of human rights, strengthening the rule of law, accountability, protection of civilian activities, support of equality, fighting discrimination and strengthening of implementation of international mechanisms, indicating that Sudan needs support of the international community 
to maintain these achievements via lifting of the economic sanctions imposed on the country. The Sudanese Red Crescent Society, SRCS, in North Kordofan State, is ready to prepare an emergency team to cover the basic school examinations in the state, which will kick off tomorrow, Sunday. The society held an emergency meeting chaired by the director of the SRCS branch in the state, Dr. Salih Muhammad Ali, and assured the preparation of the volunteers operating to cover the basic school certificate examinations in Sheikhan locality, led by the director of the volunteers' development and emergencies, Abdul Wahid Muhammad Nur. Dr. Salim welcomed the volunteers, lauding the efforts being exerted by them to combat COVID-19, while Mr. Abdul Wahid thanked the volunteers for extending the health services, including sterilization of the examination centers in all the localities of the state. The Federal Ministry of Health has declared 83 confirmed cases of COVID-19, raising the general toll to 10,682, recoveries 21 and 2 deaths. The ministry urged all patriots to follow procedures of health safety for eradicating coronavirus pandemic in Sudan. Reminding headlines. Cases leveled against activists and media elements who insulted armed forces. African Union holds mini-summit on Ethiopian Dam next Tuesday. Human Rights Council commends Sudan cooperation with the Commission Country Office. Well, that was everything for tonight. Thank you for following and see you tomorrow.